Hello everyone, this video is sponsored by Brilliant and in this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have x to the power 8 equals 16 to the power x and we're going to be solving for x values. What else could we solve for, right? And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first method. So for my first method, since we have something like x to the 8 equals 16 to the power x, I noticed that one of the bases is a power of 2, and 8 is an even number, so that might be a little clue for me to pick x as a power of 2. So I'm going to substitute x equals 2 to the power n on both sides of this equation, and see where that takes us. So if you replace x with 2 to the power n, you're going to get 2 to the power n to the power 8, and replace x with 2 to the n, you're going to get 16 to the power 2 to the power n. Great, let's go ahead and simplify this. First of all, we can replace the 16 with 2 to the fourth power, since that's a power of 2, and then raise it to the power 2 to the power n. And then this one actually can be multiplied, and that gives us 2 to the power 8n. Great, now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. Now, since we have two exponents, they are multiplied here. So that gives us 2 to the power 4 times 2 to the power n. Now the bases are equal, so are the exponents, which means 8n equals 4 times 2 to the power n. Before you, you conclude anything, I want you to simplify this. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression. We can go ahead and divide both sides by 4. That gives us 2n equals 2 to the power n. How nice. And you should recognize this because I think a while ago I made a problem that's something like this. But from here, I'm hoping that immediately you're going to realize that n equals 2 works. Because 2 times 2 is the same as 2 to the second power. Right? Such a nice number. But of course we're looking for x and n equals 2 just implies that x equals 4. Right? So x equals 4 is a solution. But is that the only solution? That's a million dollar question. Let's go ahead and take a look. Well, if you replace n with 1, uh-oh, we also get a solution because 2 times 1 equals 2, and 2 to the power 1 is also 2. Therefore, we get two solutions so far, and n equals 1 implies that x equals 2, because remember, x is equal to 2 to the power n, right? It's kind of funny because this is the same as x, right? Anyways, we got two solutions so far, and we're going to be looking at another method. So before we look for other things or other solutions, if there are any, let's go ahead and go over the second method. All right. So here's the second method. For my second method, I kind of want to do what is more standard because, you know, uh, a power of two may not always work nicely like this, but it did. So now we're going to go ahead and try to put the x's on the same side. So we can do it in two steps or one step. It's totally up to you. I'm going to do it in two steps. First, raise both sides to the power 1 over 8 to get rid of the 1 over 8 to isolate the x. 8 and 1 over 8 cancel out, and we end up with x equals 16 to the power x. And then that is multiplied by 1 over 8, which gives us 16 to the power x over 8. Make sense? Now, we're going to do a little bit more because we want to get all the x's on the same side. So why not, why not we just raise both sides to the power 1 over x. And again, we could do this in one step if you just raised both sides to the power 1 over 8x, right? And that would basically give the solution right away. But anyways, it's not always easy to see. But x's cancel out here, leaving us with something super duper nice. We get x to the power 1 over x equals 16 to the power 1 over 8. Well, it's not super nice, but we can make it nicer, right? This is good, but we can make it better. How? First of all, what, let's talk about why this is not very good. It's good, but it's not very good. Because notice that on the left-hand side, we have x and 1 over x. But on the right-hand side, they're not related that way. 16 and 1 over 8 are not reciprocals, right? As far as I know. So, how do we make it better? Uh, again, by considering the fact that 16 is a power of 2, you see, that plays such an important role here. So we can kind of write that as 2 to the power 4, and then raise it to the power 1 over 8. Awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply the exponents again. That's going to give us 2 to the power 4 over 8, which can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. Uh-oh, this is super nice, right? You know why? Because now i got the same pattern. x to the power 1 over x equals 2 to the power one half and that's just awesome 
Why? Because I can directly conclude that, hey, x equals 2 from here. But wait a minute. Didn't we find two solutions? What about the other one? We can do it. And guess what? We don't have to guess. We can do it without guessing. We can actually manipulate this expression as follows. 2 to the power 1 half can be turned into something amazing. You know how? Replace the 1 half with 2 fourths. And then put this 2 inside and then put the one-fourth on the outside. Again, when you have power of a power or superpower property, it tells us to multiply exponents, but we can also undo it, right? Write it this way. But what is two to the second power? Four. So this gives us four to the power one-fourth. If that didn't make it clear, let me write it one more time. X to the power one over X equals four to the power one over four. Does that make sense? Just like the other one, from here we conclude that X equals four. Awesome. Notice that this gave us another solution, just like the first method, but it's more algebraic, probably more rigorous, right? Great. So we got two solutions. What else can you ask for, right? Well, is there another way? Uh, is there another solution? Let's go ahead and check out something from Wolfram Alpha, because Wolfram Alpha is awesome, even though it has some issues once in a while. Notice that we got the two solutions, 2 and 4, as you can see, right? But there's another one. Uh-oh, that seems to be a negative solution. I'll give you the numerical value, don't worry, pretty uh, soon. But notice that we can also express it using an awesome function, which is called Lambert's W function. Look it up, it's amazing. And it allows you basically to solve uh, for equations like this, because if you input t to the t, it gives you t. But of course, it doesn't guarantee a single value. Sometimes it's multi-valued. Anyways, would you like to learn about exponential equations and many other topics in math, I think you do, that's why you're here, right? In that case, I would highly recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has tons of courses in math, computer science, data analysis, and much more, among many other courses that they offer. Exploring data visually is an excellent course and a great introduction to data analysis. So make sure to check out Brilliant, because it's an amazing platform that will hook you up in math, computer science, and much more. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cybermath or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription, so make sure to check it out. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And here's the numerical value I was talking about. And yes, there are three solutions and this is the third one. You can go ahead and check it out. Bye-bye.